Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sismini, a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout 4 No Guns. Now, just a quick note in case you're watching this in the future and may possibly get confused. Yes, this is part 15 of No Guns. However, between parts 14 and 15 of No Guns, we played the entirety of Automatron with this character. If you're watching this in the playlist for Fallout 4 No Guns, you'll already know that because I actually put the Automatron episodes in. If you've just watched episode 14, you need to watch Automatron first. All four of the episodes that made up that were part of the No Guns run. But yes, welcome to the post-Automatron world. You probably guessed that, by the way, because of the number of bloody robots floating around. And speaking of Automatron, there's something else I need to do, which I forgot at the end of last part. The iBot pod thingy that I picked up in the Mechanist Lair. So now, in special, we will find an iBot pod. So, you know, I may as well put that next to my robot workbench. It seems kind of, you know, connected to all that sort of thing. We've just got this weird little pod thing here. Let's build one of those. This mysteriously does need power, even though, you know, that thing didn't. Okay, nice big generator hooked up to this. Let's see what this thing does then. So, an iBot pod. I want to make my own little ED here. So, scan for components, scan for ammo, scan for explosives. Uh, sure, scan for explosives. Why not? I could do with a few more grenades. I'm always running a bit low on those. So, scan for explosives. Yes. I bought docking station. Choose explosive type to locate. Please locate fragmentation grenades for me. They work perfectly fine. And all the others are probably a little bit on the, uh, the rare side, to be honest. Like, it would be probably be a bit greedy to ask it to just get plasma grenades. Yes, get fragmentation grenades for me. Scanning. Wait for iBot to locate fragmentation grenades. And now the iPod, ah, my own little ED just gets himself activated and now just goes for a wander. Where's it going? Is it just gonna, like, find fragmentation grenades out of nowhere here in Sanctuary Hills? Or does it actually go out into the wider world and find them? And if so, does it end up exploding? <laughs> ah, this is cool. Maybe I'll come back and check on how you're doing later because it does appear you're... Yeah, actually heading out to Sanctuary Hills and off into the wider world. So, hopefully, uh, hopefully you get on fine. Godspeed, little drone. And that has indeed just become a little extra miscellaneous quest. Fine, we'll check on that later. But very cool, you can just kind of send that little robot out to find whatever component or explosive or whatever that you want. Very, very cool indeed. If there's one thing that you know you're going to need lots of, could be worth, yeah, doing that. That's very nice. And if you want to, you can recall the iBot at any time. Lovely. Just in case you want to redeploy them or whatever, you can just recall at any point. So we'll check back in on that later. But today, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be looking at power armor for the most part. Because power armor is very, very interesting. And power armor is something I didn't really look at in my first Fallout 4 playthrough. But don't worry, it's not going to be just an episode of crafting or talking. There's a couple of interesting little things that I do actually need to do and a bit of exploring I need to do. So this is the T60 I picked up off the Brotherhood, but T60 is only the second best armor type in the game. The best armor class in the game, meanwhile, is the X01. Now, some people were saying, oh, John, you missed some X01 armor in the Meryl Bunker when you were there during Automatron. No, no, I didn't. X01 armor cannot spawn under level 28, with a couple of hard-coded exceptions, like that helmet that's in the, uh, yeah, the helmet that's in the Pridwin stores, that even then you need master lockpick or hacking if you want to be able to steal that. But other than that, the full suits of X01 armor that spawn around the Commonwealth cannot spawn below level 28. But would you believe, guess what level I just hit at the very end of last part? Ah yes, that would be level 28. Perfect. Now here's a perk I've been thinking of for a while and really I should have taken a lot earlier and when we do survival mode I will definitely be taking this one a lot earlier. Lone Wanderer when adventuring without companions, 15% damage reduction, very very important, and carry weight increased by 50. Ah, oh, that's damn good. Going up to, yeah, 30% less damage and 100 more carry capacity and eventually at level 40, this one's bloody amazing, 25% damage increase to absolutely all weapons. That's just so powerful, it's wonderful. So yes, we will definitely be taking some of that, because 15% damage reduction, on top of things I've already got, like Rooted, the fact that I've now got two pieces of Sentinel gear that I can put on if I were to want them. Oh, I've just got so much damage reduction going on at the moment. But yes, now that I'm level 28, 
actually XO1 armor does spawn. And I'm going to go and find one of the locations where it can actually spawn. So we're back here by the old North Church where the railroad HQ is. And we want to be heading south down by the river. An area we've already passed through previously and indeed cleared out recently. So there shouldn't really be much trouble here to be honest. The thing that we're looking for that we may not have passed previously is we're looking for on the compass a little clock tower symbol. And here we are, Custom House Tower, found it almost right away, it's pretty much just Old North Church, straight through the park, right here, you're already on top of it. Very recognisable because of this little plaza here, this big old building, these flags. Now this is not the building, however, that we actually want to find. The building we want to find is pretty much due west from here, but it's an unmarked location. So just head straight west through here and have a little loopsy round the streets. Though, ooh, we've got some raiders round here. Hello, raiders. Oh, hell no, says this raider, a particularly sassy raider by the sounds of it. So you're going to go down. And there's our thing right here. 35 court right there. Guarded by a few laser turrets, however. So they're going to need to go down. One grenade over there. There we are, and with the extended range I personally get off Demolitions Expert 3, should easily take all of that out. Perfect. I wouldn't call it a secret, but I would say it's probably something that unless you've kind of done some research into where to find power armor, you may well not be familiar with. But anyway, let's head into here as we are level 28 and thus are actually ready for power armor of the X01 variety to spawn. Now appropriately enough in here, we will also be taking on robots eventually. So I'm going to have General Chow's Revenge to hand. There's an elevator right here we can go through, but I'm just going to clear out the rest of the building first. No need to rush. To be honest, nothing much here but a safe in that there back room, so we may as well take the lift straight up to the top floor. And indeed, therefore, we're skipping pretty much straight to where we want to go. A few raiders that are dead around here should let you know there's something dangerous in here more than raiders. Once you're upstairs, aside from this little side room here behind a novice locked door, there's basically nothing to do but head up onto the roof. And would you believe the moment you step forward, some red lights begin flashing. Be very ready, because there's all of a sudden legendary sentry bots. Oh yes. No, I don't have a zero chance to hit. I've blatantly got plenty of chances to hit. Now, do I get a sneak attack? No, but let's go for a critical here. Need you to go down. You've mutated. This is going to be a problem. Now, I'm already carrying an addiction right now, so there's no worry about kind of getting myself more addicted to things. May as well just kind of do all the drugs as usual. I don't think I need Mysterious Serum. I think that will be overkill on this occasion. I'd say buff out some booze, Quantum and Psycho Jet will do on their own. And there's the Assaultron coming in. Should be able to take her out in two hits. Now the question is, where's the Legendary just gone? Because there was a Legendary that seems to have kind of gone missing here. You're dead, fine. No worry. Oh, there you are. Excuse me, we just need to deal with you. There we are, you're going down fast and now a couple of hits there we are are you dead if so remember to back off because sentry bots are going to explode twice ouch there we go possibly continue backing off just in case uh yeah i just got horrendously crippled there uh so here's the thing sentry bots always explode legendary robots always explode legendary sentry bots have been observed exploding twice in a row but I think we're okay there. Luckily, we were just able to take that explosion. Beautiful. And I'd say probably the buff out helped us survive that by quite a bit. So that's nice. But I've still got a crippled leg there. At this point, I'm crippled, addicted to drugs, all sorts of good stuff. So let's get all my limbs going on normally. And then I'd say this is an excellent time for a refreshing beverage too. Refreshing beverages, amazingly overpowered, even on survival difficulty, the uh, they kind of heal relatively much faster than stim packs. Now I get a ooh, violent 10mm pistol. That's actually pretty good. Again, not for this run through, but that's not a bad little drop there from this legendary here. Together with two fusion cores, always very, very welcome. Two aluminium, precious, precious aluminium. Now, where did the assault tron go? Now, those two things opened up here. I don't know why, by the way, there's these two incredibly dangerous robots up here in what looks like a perfectly normal just store in the middle of the financial district. Maybe they're just security. In each of the rooms they were in, there is a button. Activate button number one, then activate button number two. And that then opens this here gateway. And hidden behind here... Oh my goodness, would you look at that. It's a full set of X01 armor. 
So you can see that this is an absolute complete set of the best armor in the game, complete with its own fusion core. It even comes with its own fully charged fusion core. Don't need to provide one of your own. Now at this point you may be a little bit confused because that's not how you're expecting X01 armor to look. Yeah, it's an odd bug. I've witnessed it before. Sometimes the game just seems to load the wrong model in, but you can see there it does clearly say on it, X01. So don't worry, when we fast travel away that should rectify itself. And indeed, as I was saying, now that we are back at Sanctuary Hills and we step out of this armor, it looks more like it should do. It looks more like the traditional kind of uh, enclave style armor you would expect X01 to look like. So now it looks right. Perfect. So, bright sunny new day. Let's have a look-see at this new X01 armor that I've just picked up here. Let's get crafting on that. So right now, uh, though it's the best armor in the game, it comes with basically no modifications whatsoever, which is not spectacular, to be honest. Now, something that I have been told that I kind of missed last time, sorry about this, the Tesla armor that you get out of Automatron. It is effectively, if you like, a legendary variant of T60. So you can't take the Tesla effect off and change it, but you can improve the armor because this is effectively base T60 armor. Now... Each of those gives you, I believe it's 5% increased in energy damage uh, for a total of 15% if you were to use all of them. Now that's obviously not the best for me, however it is still useful because several of my most powerful weapons, particularly the Furious Super Sledge and General Shouts Revenge will, once I'm done with it, together with the Mr. Handy uh, Electric Blade, have bonus energy damage. So being able to increase that by a further 10% just further increases your damage output. So equip those and equip those. So we've now switched over to a not matching set of X01 plus Tesla T60, because I'd rather have the legendary T60 for an extra 10% bonus damage. Plus, Tesla armor just looks really, really badass because it's all glittery and beautiful, so I'd say that's definitely worth it as well, even though you lose a tiny bit of damage resistance. But as we discussed when we discussed damage resistance, once your damage resistance is significantly above the damage your opponent can output, like, minor increases or decreases really don't matter that much because you're getting diminishing returns, so it's not going to make much difference the amount of damage I'm actually taking. So as we say, this is currently Model A. This is how power armor works in case you haven't really dug into it that much. For the most part, a model is just a function of how tough it is in terms of damage resistance, in terms of basic damage resistance, energy resistance, and the amount of health that the item has as well. Though typically they do get heavier as you improve them. As I've got armor 3 and a basic rank of science, I can go all the way up to model E. So right now it's 130, 85 together with 110 health. And we can jump that up to 210, 165, together with 170 health. So it's a very major improvement. Now the downside of doing this is it's really intensive on your materials. You will burn through adhesive, aluminium, ceramic very, very quickly indeed. Now when it comes to the material mods, for the most part that's just a paint job. Um, fortunately some of them are free to apply to your armour, particularly the ones you get out of magazines are free. So the Hot Rod uh, Flames paint you can get from the scrapyard near Sanctuary Hills, you can get that uh, very early on in the game. You can just apply that to everything for free and that gets you plus one agility. Once you're later into the game and you've joined the Brotherhood, in fact I think you actually have to have gone to the Pridwin for this, then you can have the Brotherhood of Steel's Night paint for free. Now that's pretty powerful because that gets you plus one strength which I'd rather have. But there's a small problem. Unfortunately, the downside is that X01 armor will not take a Brotherhood of Steel paint job. If you want that to be plus one strength, the only option you've got is military paint. There's also a couple of other things that open up. Like, for example, there is such a thing as X01 EMP shielding. I've no idea quite why you'd ever want to use it, though. Because it's actually worse than just basic prism shielding. Which does the same thing, but better. I guess the X01 EMP shielding requires slightly less like materials to craft, like you don't need any nuclear materials to make it. But it also requires way more aluminium. Like yeah, this is 4 adhesive, 2 aluminium and some nuclear materials. Whereas that requires 6 adhesive, 8 aluminium and it does a worse job. I'm just not sure why you'd ever do the X01 EMP shielding quite frankly when prism shielding is a thing. If that's what you want to do, if you want to get energy resistance up. So yep, if we want that increased strength, we're going to have to do military paint. And military paint does indeed require a lot of materials, particularly aluminium, adhesive, nuclear materials. So let's just apply military paints to all of my pieces. So that right there is now this power armor in all military paint. I like the military paint. I like the kind of the grey greenness of it. I think it looks very, very cool. Now we're starting to get somewhere. And then finally, there's the miscellaneous modification. These are particularly important if you're doing an unarmed run, because most of them that are on the arms are related to unarmed damage, so adds energy damage to unarmed attacks. Pretty damn cool. 
increases unarmed damage, unarmed attacks cause bleeding damage. Yeah, they're all related to unarmed. The only one that's in any way relevant to me is the optimized braces, so reduced action point cost for power attacks. So yeah, may as well go for that. That's the only one that has any advantage to me at all. The legs naturally have a different set of miscellaneous mods on them. Many of them relate to sprinting, which is actually very, very useful to me. So there's carry weight, uh, damage radius for impact landing, i.e. when you smash into the ground from a high place, kind of the radius at which enemies are stunned, or if you've taken pain train, damaged. Uh, optimized servo, so reduced action point cost for sprinting. Pretty useful, but that is locked to science 3. Increased sprint speed to additional action point cost. Personally, I don't think that's worth it. I don't think that's spectacular. Or indeed, kinetic servos. This one I actually quite like. So increase action point refresh speed while moving. That one I quite like. So if you're in trouble, if you're just kind of dancing around your enemies, your action points come back faster. Now, before we go any further with this, we need to top up on supplies on account of the fact that we're lacking quite a few of them. A big one that's going to run low very, very quickly is aluminium. Now that one is, well, there are a couple of places you can sort that out. One of which is fairly well known. The other of which is actually much easier, but I don't see get talked about anywhere near as much. So welcome back to the core Vega assembly plan, where all the enemies are still very, very crappy and low leveled, so you don't need to worry about them in the slightest. At this point, just kind of head through, stab them with Pikmin's Blade, they will go down in seconds, you really don't need to worry about them in the slightest. And we can just clear these guys out very, very easily, this place is no longer scary at all. Now what you're looking for here are these lovely things, coolant caps. They're worth two aluminium each, and there's a hell of a lot of them dotted around the core Vega. So right here, down by one of the production lines on the ground floor, there's another four of those right here. They're just kind of dotted around everywhere. I think a lot of people miss them because they're quite small and most of the things that you can pick up around here are actually made of steel, like the tube phalanges and stuff. And every single one of them is worth two aluminium each. Very, very nice. Now a shortage of rubber brings us much closer to home. Just a red rocket and there is no shortage of rubber in the world because of all the bloody tyres. Just break all of those down. They're like 10 each a piece, so we can have all the rubber. I think that one was even higher. Yeah, 30 rubber from a tire wall. Four off just a big tire on its own. There is no shortage of rubber here whatsoever. Do all that and you'll end up with 147 rubber, though I may have missed some. So, more than you will really ever need. Now we've discussed adhesive before, how you can make it out of vegetable starch. I did of course remember one new settlement that's very important for corn, which is probably the rarest material. Uh, the slog up in the kind of the northeast of the map has a ridiculously large amount of corn that you can come and just help yourself to. So huge amounts of corn, very, very useful. And then potatoes and mute fruit can come from pretty much anywhere else. So you are absolutely sorted. So that leaves one more material we might be a little bit shy of, and that's ceramic. Now obviously you can just go around collecting ashtrays and plates and coffee mugs and stuff. However, I had a little look around and I found one area that's actually quite interesting, which is um, head to the downed massive airliner thing. This, by the way, is in like the very top north of the map here. So like, it's pretty close to Sanctuary actually. Just head due east and you'll get to it here. And then look on your compass in the uh, kind of southerly direction, and you will see, yes, there we are, that thing that looks like, well, it could be any number of things, but uh, it's actually a gravestone. And we want to be heading over in that direction now. It's actually incredibly close by, right here, in fact, and we are at a graveyard. Now, why do we want to come to Wildwood Cemetery? Why? Because lots of vases containing flowers have been left around. Also rather unusually for a cemetery, uh, there's not much in the way of enemies here. Normally cemeteries are just bloody crawling with ghouls, but no, not this one. This one's actually quite a nice peaceful place. So for example, inside uh, one of these here big toomey things, we have got ourselves a willow bud vase and a willow vaulted vase and some more vases and even more vases. And basically each of these only weighs one but contains two ceramics, so it's actually a pretty good deal. There's also mysteriously a copy of Total Hack in the middle of this cemetery. I've no bloody idea why, but now you've got the turret hacking source code here. I've, yeah, why that's in the middle of a cemetery, I don't know. Maybe they ran out of sensible places to put it. Because the, um, the Total Hack for Protectrons is in the middle of an electronics store, which is a much more sensible place. And of course, breaking down bathroom stuff is actually probably the easiest way to get ceramic too. So for example, basically any settlement where uh, it's actually based around a traditional town or housing or something, where therefore there's a good chance that you'll find some sinks or some bathtubs, just break all those down for ceramic. Honestly, you won't get that much, like a sink is only worth a single ceramic, which I find uh, a little bit unfair, quite frankly, it should be a little bit more than that. 
as well as a mirror. Mirror's just stealing glass, that's not ceramic. There's a bathtub. That'll give you two ceramics. Ah, a toilet bowl's worth two, though. That's good to know. Now, with that, we've definitely got enough materials to do some crafting, but there's one more armor piece, a special, unique, really awesome sort of armor piece that I want before I actually settle on this type of thing and invest more materials improving it. And that brings me back to Cambridge. That's the Cambridge police station right there. And then just head due south. I am after the Cambridge Polymer Labs. Now, the Cambridge Polymer Labs, though I've not actually shown it off on the channel yet, um, I stumbled across this while I was off-screening at one point. This is probably my favourite location and favourite quest in the entire game. It does so much that's fallouty and so much that's 100% beautifully right. By the way, there's a good chance you'll be invited into this area um, because you'll find just a wandering iBot that will kind of basically uh, say there's jobs going at Cambridge Polymer with excellent paying conditions. So that's very often how you will find this place in the first place. Let's begin the interview. Due to increased demands for staff in all fields, we have condensed the employment test accordingly. Question one. Do you possess previous experience with polymer synthesis? Totally. Absolutely yes. Yes. Calculating test results. I am pleased to offer you the position of researcher. Good job, Marcus, in the future. So we've just been given this job as a researcher in this facility that seems to be still operating. I've got my own lab coat. I've got my own little clipboard. This is all lovely. I have been instructed to inform you that Director Elwood has issued mandatory overtime due to uncompleted milestones. Consequently, staff will not be allowed to leave the labs until the piezonucleic lining project has been completed. Please report to the project lead, Dr. Elwood Woolham, for specific research assignment. So yes, I have now been trapped in this lab because I'm told that we're not allowed to leave until the research project is completed. Starts off sounding very much like a traditional Fallout story. The idea of a, a big corporation immediately pre-war treating its, you know, employees appallingly, doing things that were completely unethical and wrong. But now I'm not allowed to leave anymore. This door is locked. And if I try to open the door, system error, security lockdown is in progress. I cannot actually leave. So instead, I'm just stuck here. I can now either try and force an escape or I'm told I can try and complete the research project, which you're actually allowed to do. You can just try and figure out the entire bloody research project. And I love it. I love it because there's actual multiple different ways of completing this mission. Now, let's start off with a terminal to get some interesting lore going on here. So this introduces what the project actually was, the Nucleostrictive Lining Project. So if we could take a known piezoelectric material, lead zirconium titanite, PZT, and properly applying a polymer of gold and lithium hydride, the localised conversion of initialising ionising science, 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 suitable for the application to pre-existing power armour currently in use by the US Armed Forces. So, we could make awesome power armour. However, the people were trapped. The team is fractured, falling apart, they don't know what's going on outside, and have started making attempts to escape the lab. While I was sleeping, they managed to cut a hole clean through the thin interior wall out of the clean room, but have been unable to break through the hardened outer wall. Will started talking with some of the others about going at the problem from a more oblique angle, which got me to thinking about the thermal dissipation problem. And we see there that some of the team started trying to escape, and some of the team started trying to actually just solve the project, believing they would be allowed to go as soon as it was actually done. So the terminal in question that we we need to work with is over here, the polymer coating applicator that I'm allowed to use. And that tells us that we're going to need two reagents, the left reagent and the right reagent, as well as a radioactive isotope. And we've got none of those at the moment. And we know what we need. We need lithium hydride and gold, because it specifically said so. So we've got an unidentified sample right here. I don't know what it is. So we can just plug it into here. Yep, plug that in. Scan it. And that is hydrochloric acid, a useful as a weapon. Well, not in this game, but theoretically, actually. Uh, but that is not actually what we need. But now we know it's hydrochloric acid. The game actually relabels it because we've scanned it so we know what it is. And I love this quest. This quest is the coolest thing. Unfortunately, in here, we have the small problem of a small number of feral ghouls. Not desperately uh, difficult ones, to be honest. This is... Yeah, they're just up here. These guys should go down nice and quick. And in addition, right now, the turrets will actually attack them, but not you. 
you're supposed to be here, ghouls apparently are not. So you're actually safe to be in here and the turrets will only attack the ghouls. Because yeah, the turrets are actually uh, they're on your side, which is really, really cool. And hello, you're going to get stabbed by Pikmins right now. Pikmins is an excellent weapon for these guys. So, we now start searching the facility and we could potentially find some uh, new resources that we could use. So here in the storeroom we have another unknown sample. Excellent. Together with a hazmat suit if we happen to need one. We might need one of those later. Could be very, very useful down the line. Because obviously these guys have all turned into ghouls. There's definitely radiation somewhere. Let's go plug our new sample into the machine and see what this gives us. And that is lithium hydride. That is the first of the ones that we actually need. So next we just need to find a big thing full of gold. We've already found the first of our actual ingredients here. Some of the doors are broken however, which means, like in all my favourite Fallout levels, we're going to have to find alternate ways around. We may not be able to get through that door, however there are other doors that will open, and also we'll be able to drop in from above or go through broken walls. So in this case, go into the room next door, and then just head in for a broken wall. A couple of ghouls in here, but they're just basic roamers, nothing too dangerous. Got another mysterious unidentified sample right here. Take one of those. As well as a terminal here called the isotope containment terminal. Well, that sounds bloody useful if we want isotopes. And with that, we can open up a security door. We've opened up the door to the big radioactive terrifying place with a glowing one in it. Beautiful. So obviously we could go down through the radioactive door to take care of him. But let's not worry about him just yet. First... We need to get rid of... Oh, also, be careful of the rats. Careful of the rats around here. Obviously, we also need to get ourselves that gold. Obviously, there's a lab round here. Sneak round the partly collapsed walkway. And if you've got expert, you can go straight into this lab. I don't, but peer through, and there's clearly a bit of a problem with a hole in the ceiling. So if we could just... Ah, oh, this place is wonderful. This is the best location. Best location in the entire bloody game. It's just so much. Choice, option, exploration. A really fascinating story that gets... Even more interesting as we go further into it too. The office on the other side, however, has a nice little smashed way through that leads me up into the air ducts and the crawl space. Though first, I've got to deal with aroma, apparently. There's also, rather nicely, uh, another sample here. And someone who, on their desk, you can find a teacup, a couple of teacups, a teapot, and some rat poison. Someone who decided to take that way. I always like stumbling across that creepy sort of thing in Fallout. Indeed, there's even a suicide note here on this occasion. Everyone else left tried to get into Bergman's lab to get the password for the isotope containment, but he rigged up some kind of gun. Erica was killed. Most of my hair is gone from the radiation I can barely see. There's no way I can finish my research on my own, so I've chosen to make it a quick end. John L. Wood, I'll see you in hell. So yes, they were so close to solving the actual problem, but they were not able to do so. The tea stuff's really good, by the way. A teacup is worth two ceramics, and a teapot is worth five ceramic, which is really, really good, and also kind of odd. Because a coffee cup's only worth one ceramic, but a teacup's worth two, even though, like, the coffee mug is quite a bit bigger than the teacup, but for whatever reason, that's how it works in this game. So up into the crawl space, you can just drop down into the area where we started off, but don't need to worry about that. Instead, just creep around the outside of this, and there's a lot more to this place. You've got to choose where to drop, though. So again, this hole just takes you back out to the starting area, so you don't want to go in there either. Just keep going round and round and round, and eventually we will be above, if you figure out where you are, we'll be above the actual laboratory. Uh, so now drop down here, and we're into the one room we haven't gone into yet. And this will be the guy who the note just said, he somehow got himself hold of a gun and was able to kill everyone. Indeed, there's the pipe pistol. He crafted his own gun out of just bits of metal and wood, so therefore it is an improvised gun syncs up perfectly with oh this this quest is amazing and anyway we've got ourselves another sample up here too as well as the radioactive containment password just in case you can't solve the other computer that would let you access the little kind of radiation room with the glowing one in it but of course if you had expert hacking you could have just come in here in the first place you wouldn't have needed to have bothered going all the way around that way now as for bergman's plan in here by the way his plan was to try and fight his way out so on his terminal, we can get the actual email that was sent from J. Elwood, the person who runs the Cambridge Polymer Lab, just saying, Morning, everyone. No, you've all been here overnight and everyone's tired. You need everyone to push through just a little longer. Dr. Elwood Woolham has said that you are very close to cracking the problem with the nucleostrictive lining project. I have a good feeling today will be the day. So along with our normal snacks, I've sent a run to Slocum Joe's for coffee and donuts. Hooray. So indeed, they were locked in here against their will. But if you keep reading as well, I also got off the phone with Colonel Kemp, said that we some training exercises happening in town today so if you hear what sounds like tanks or gunfire 
don't panic, it's just a drill. So all of a sudden we get the implication that actually the end of the world was actually happening, but he decided to actually lock them in to keep them doing their jobs rather than letting them know, by the way, there's a chance the world just ended. So JL Wood comes across very, very badly at first. However, we also get to his actual plan, which is he said that if he could just make the facility defense system think that the lab had been breached, then as a kind of override, all the doors would open to allow for evacuation. So the facility defense systems, he could at this point activate the emergency override and cause therefore the doors to open, but all the robots would attack everything on site. So we turn that robot against us, but in all fairness, it was just a Mr. Handy. But let's not do that. Let's actually solve the problem in the peaceful way. And when peaceful, I mean, we have stabbed, you know, a few of these uh, ghouls, but uh, they, they barely count as people anymore. It's fine. Instead, let's take all of those isotopes we've already found and plug a few of them in. We know about the lithium hydride already. Let's plug in two more unidentified samples and figure out which one is the gold. So scan them and we've got gold and cobalt. Excellent. So now just take the yeah, take the cobalt away and add the lithium hydride. So now we've got gold and lithium hydride actually here. So now, however, we have one more problem. And that's that we need an isotope to plug in here to power the whole thing or something. I'm not sure how polonucleoclaic something or something or other actually works. We've got to plug something into here. Well, we know there's a big radioactive room and we just opened it. So let's go in there and kill that glowing one. And indeed, oh, I might be able to get a sneak attack on him. Is he right here? Is he right here? Yeah, no, come on. I need to get a sneak attack on him. Yes. Come on, get the sneak attack with Blitz. Get the sneak attack with Blitz. Get the. There's a lot of rads in here, by the way. Oh, come on. Come on. How can you not? Come on. Do this. Do this game. Come on. What? What? There you go. Now you've got it. Right. And that was a sneak attack and he's already down. Beautiful. He goes down nice and quick. Uh, hazmat suit is obviously here if you need it. I'm just going to pop some Radax instead. So glowing one goes down with two doses of Radax. This room is not so bad at all. We can just run through here. Grab ourselves right here, the U238, the radioactive sample that we needed. Perfect, and that's all we need out of this nice radioactive room. Lovely, out we go. So now we can just plug that in here. That is all of the things that we actually need. So in that case, let's run the actual thing. Run loaded fabrication routine, because I've actually done everything that we need. And the only reason they couldn't do it is because the uh, gold was locked in with the guy who went a bit mad. So, running fabrication, please observe at the viewing window, gladly. So, we just go over here, and we see, in a moment, a piece of power armor, that's a torso piece, just moves through here, gets fabricated by some little lasers, and in a second, pops out. And this right here is piezonucleic power armor chest. Beautiful. And you can see that it's pretty bloody good uh, because it starts off Model E, which is why it's already looking so damn strong. And it's got basically, it's all kind of standard stuff. I think it's T45? I'm not actually sure. I think it looks like just basic T45 to me. But it does come with a unique effect, which is radiation exposure increases action point refresh speed. Which is actually pretty good if you're, yeah, if you're being affected by rads in any way, then your action points come back faster. Now that is, well, that's very useful for reasons that we'll get into very, very soon indeed. And with that, the research project has been completed. So let's have a chat with Molly. I have been instructed to inform you that Director Elwood has issued mandatory overtime due to uncompleted milestones. Have you completed the research on the Pisa Nucleic Lining Project? Why, well, yes, it's done. Got it right here. Prototype is done. Wonderful. Mandatory overtime mode disengaged. Clean room override disengaged. So I could have just activated the emergency override and just straight up... Why have I just suddenly gone into... Oh, it was a quest item, so it weighed nothing. Now it's become a piece of armor, so it starts weighing something. Got it. That makes sense. Well, kind of. Well, actually, it doesn't make sense at all, but it's a thing in Fallout. So with that, it seems like a fairly simple story has been sorted out there. A horrifyingly evil boss has been defeated far into the future. The project was completed and we are free to go on our way. But there's a little bit more, yes. One final twist that makes this quest go from good to absolutely this bloody excellent. I expect he will be quite excited to see the prototype. Indeed, she now opens the uh, the door to this guy. And would you believe this guy is in fact also a zombie. Sorry, shouldn't say zombie. Very impolite of me. We'll just quickly murder him because he charged at me. Hopefully you don't mind that, do you? 
Sure. Wonderful news. The Nucleus Drictic Blading Project has finally produced a working prototype. I must apologize for the director. He hasn't been himself lately. Must be the office blue. Payroll systems indicate that I have been authorized to provide you with a completion bonus at this time. Hooray for bonus! Minus taxes and benefits. Unfortunately, due to a lack of current projects, we must lay off redundant staff members at this time. This is not a reflection on your work, and we will be happy to provide you with a positive reference. Shutting down. And then she just mysteriously dies, straight away, and gives you a little bit of XP, lovely. Together with the director's key, very nice. But if we read the director's terminal, well first we get a surgical journal right here. So another plus two. I think we must have found nearly all of those, just happened to have stumbled across the vast majority of them. So in his computer, we get a little bit more context for what actually just happened. So this is the guy from the army they were developing the armor for, and he was absolutely determined and quite angry that the thing be completed as soon as possible, but wouldn't say why. And it turns out it was a warning. They hit us with a nuke. So the lab, however, was able to survive because the lab was heavily armoured. The director lied and said, like we knew, that it was just training manoeuvres, so he just lied to them. Meanwhile, our guy here desperately tried to get hold of Kemp to extract him and his team. But here's where it gets interesting and the whole thing changes its meaning. I managed to find the right frequency and get through to a military liaison. He said that Colonel Kemp had left orders they could only spare an extraction team for assets vital to war effort. We try to have them get us out without the project completed, he'll have us executed for treason. I have to keep them in the lab, we have to finish the project. So in other words, now he finds himself in the situation where he's trying to get his team extracted, but he can only do it if the project's completed. So he locks them in, knowing that they might well break down if he tells them there's been a nuke and everyone they know and love is dead. Locks them in the lab and just tells them, oh, it's just overtime, we'll pay you extra, here's donuts and coffee. And then once he's told them that lie, he can't change the story because, you know, who knows how they'd react to it. So he's trying to save them. His final message to his own wife, Erica, who was part of the team inside the lab. I know I haven't been the best husband, but I've done everything I can to try and protect you since the attack. If you're reading this, I hope it's because you finished the project and can use the radio to signal for extraction. I can't hold out any longer. So indeed... He was actually not a bastard or a monster like the heads of many corporations are inside the Fallout verse. Instead, he was actually doing quite a nice thing trying to save them all. The whole thing completely recontextualized by that one term at the end that's very easy to miss. So, back to Sanctuary Hills, and now I've got everything I need. Tons of components and that extremely cool, unique bit of armor I wanted. So, let's just quickly add that in. Okay, and on it goes. Lovely. So now a bit of a mishmash of armor types here, but we can make them all match very, very nicely. Obviously, first up, we've got the piezonucleic power armor chest, which is model E. That's actually as good as I can make it. Uh, I've only got armor 3 out of armor 4 yet, so I couldn't get it up to F anyway. So we can get that to be military to match absolutely everything else. There's some military paint right there, so we can spend some adhesive, some aluminium, and some nuclear material on that. You can see now we've got plenty of, uh, yeah, we've got plenty of materials all of a sudden. So that's now up to rank E. The chest also carries a whole bunch of interesting stuff, much of which is locked behind uh, high science. So isn't it bloody convenient then that just after coming out of Cambridge Polymer Labs, I decided to go up to Cambridge Square and grind against some ghouls to get myself up to level 29. Yes, that would be bloody convenient indeed. It's almost like I plan all this out or something. So now I can get my science up to rank 3, which opens up enough interesting new stuff that I'm very glad to do it. Now, that hurts me to do, by the way, because just so you know, level 29 is also the level that Blitz 2 opens up. It it hurts me to not actually be able to take Blitz to the moment it's available, but we shall get to that in a moment. Now with that in play, I open up a whole bunch of interesting mods. Some of them are ranked uh, Science or Armour 4, but it does still open up some really cool new stuff for me. So I've got the Blood Cleanser, Reduced Addiction from Drugs, the Motion Assist Servos, Increased Strength, now that one is a good starting point. That one's very, very tempting because plus one strength while you're in armor, given I'd be losing the effect of Grognag, would probably be very, very worthwhile having because plus one strength for having all the military paint, another strength for having the motion assist servos, all of that would be very, very useful. But there's some interesting other stuff down here as well, particularly, well, there's a jetpack, obviously. 
obviously. The jetpack, which is the best thing ever, but that's a little way off, quite frankly. There is Tesla coils, deals energy damage to nearby enemies. That is just so fundamentally cool, it's incredibly hard to resist, as well as action point refresh speed in general. All of these are fantastic. In fact, it's, it's almost a shame that there are so many really good mods on the chest piece, and that on some of the others, there's just nowhere near as good stuff but it's very difficult to pick between those. But let's be honest, was I ever going to be able to resist anything that involves slapping Tesla coils onto my armor and doing some energy damage to nearby enemies? I mean, it's not spectacular, but a lot of this game you will just be running close by to low-level melee enemies that want to charge you. It just helps out with them a little bit. So, Tesla coils we have indeed built. As we discussed previously, action point refresh speed while moving is pretty damn good, so we'll be having that. Kinetic servos in both legs together with boosting these legs up from Mark 1, which is, yeah, 170 with 110 and 140 health, up to 250 and 190 with 200 health, absolutely, Mark 5 all the way. The arms, we already did most of the good work on, you may recall, so we can boost those straight up to rank E. Just had to step away for a second there, purely to uh, top up on purified water from uh, my own workshop so I could make some more vegetable starch in order to get a bit more adhesive there. Sorry about the, uh, the small cut. So yes, now on to the helmet. Obviously we can get the helmet up to Mark 5 as well, using up another 8 adhesive. Perfect. Military paint we've already applied. Now, the other stuff. This is where this starts getting a little bit fun because there's all sorts of really unique stuff that you can apply onto the helmet too, especially once you get science up to like level two or three, you get all sorts of fun stuff. So removes rands from all consumed food, kind of fun. Increases perception, pretty much bloody useless. Vats matrix overlay increases the vats chance to hit. Very useful if you're a gun user, for a melee user, in all fairness, everything's either 95 or zero, so completely pointless. Increases intelligence, okay. Recon sensors. Sighted aiming marks enemies with a compass pip. Very useful if you're doing sighted aiming. Melee weapons can't sighted aim. For me, useless. But if you'd like to be able to always get little kind of uh, the recon compass pips going, that one's really, really, really cool. Visor highlights living targets, again, can be very, very useful, effectively, like, uh, is it the orange mentats, or the, no, the berry mentats, that give you that effect, so you can always see living creatures, that's kind of useful as well. So, lots of really useful stuff, but in all fairness, most of them, not actually that good for a melee character. In fact, so useless, I'd rather save my materials for doing something else. In particular, I'd be very interested in a red tactical headlight, Ah, oh, headlamps red and tactical. That's cool. Ah, you know what? Sure, why not? Visor highlights living targets. Let's go for it. And there we have it. What to my mind is, probably for me, well, until I can put a jetpack on it or improve everything to Model F on Armour 4, pretty much the best set of power armour I'm going to be able to have in this game. Utterly spectacular. Let's crack her open. So you can see the targeting overlay uh, straight away there, which is... Crispy's alive! Um... <laughs> Yes, uh, living things, highlighted. Very fun little thing that's kind of useful. Kind of useful when you're in first person, though, if I recall correctly. Oh, no, it does still happen in third person. That's cool. So, yeah, basically it just flags living stuff to you, which can be very, very useful indeed in kind of... Especially in more dark environments or if it's kind of crowded, can be very, very useful. So, yes, this is us right here. Oh, this is badass. This is incredibly badass. Let's start off with a damage resistance of 1,652 together with a flipping energy resistance of 1,277 and radiation resistance of just over 1,000. Pretty bloody good. Strength is at 12. Obviously, the default strength for power armor is at 11, but I get plus one to strength because I took the military paint. I could have had it at 13, but I decided to go for the Tesla coils rather than the thing that gives you the plus one strength on the chest piece. And even better, I get some extra bonus damage onto my Furious Super Sledge. Because my Furious Super Sledge is heated. Meaning it gets bonus energy damage. And I get bonus energy damage by a 10% increase. Thanks to the fact that I've got all of these beautiful, beautiful Tesla armor on both of my arms. That's a 10% increase in the amount of uh, damage it does. Because I'm like 25% of the damage is energy damage. Really, I'm only giving myself a 2.5% damage increase. But still... I think it's pretty good. And I like just the matching paint job. It's always nice when you've got a matching paint job. Because then even though this is a blend of X01, T45 and T60 armor, even then it looks like it all kind of should fit together. It all looks pretty cool. It looks like it belongs together. And that's what I particularly like about stuff like the hot rod uh, flame job. Because then as long as you 
Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but Codsworth isn't alive either. I love his little waddle. I love that I've put those legs on him. It makes him ridiculous, and I love that so, so much. But yeah, the fact that you can add, like, a free paint job to everything, thanks to finding uh, the Hot Rod Flames, means everything can always have the same colouring on it, which makes it all look like it fits together, even if it actually doesn't. So yes, this, this here is the power armor that we will be using when we need to do parry armory things. And would you believe that's immensely convenient because next time, ladies and gentlemen, we're heading into the glowing sea. I know, technically, I've got to go and, like, see uh, What's-Her-Face, Dr. Amari, and plug in the brain and go through Kellogg's memories. But to be honest, I'll probably off-screen or cut out most of that because it's entirely linear and you've seen it before and there's going to be nothing new there. So we'll blitz through that in a couple of minutes with most of it cut out next time and move pretty much straight on to the next real thing. The glowing sea in this marvellous, marvellous armour that I think will put us in very good stead to have radiation resistance and smash through everything in our way. So, that's next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout 4 No Guns, putting together what, to my mind, is pretty much some of the finest combat armour in the game. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Good dodge. Good dodge, man. Question is, can you keep it up, cop? Oh, no, you can't. Ooh, nice. Oh, didn't quite get that one, though. We are going to the gun store in style. Oh, where's my partner? Oh, he's not here. Oh, so long, loser.